Good morning, it's the 24th of November today and welcome to the Daily Post with some scriptures and thoughts and ideas that we hope will be helpful to you and uplifting. As usual, we begin with a scripture on today from Proverbs 23 and verse 17. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in fear of the Lord all the day long. To work your way through the Bible in a year today, we move on through Ezekiel chapters 22 and 23 and 1 Peter chapter 1. Thoughts of the day. Sometimes the people you expect to kick you when you're down will be the ones to help you get back up. Heroes are the people who do what has to be done when it needs to be done regardless of the consequences. The past cannot be changed. However, the future is still in our power. The motivational thought for the day, high achievement always takes place in a framework of high expectation. On this day, in 1642, Dutch explorer Abel Tasman was the first European to discover Van Diemen's Land, which is now the Australian state of Tasmania. In 1874, American inventor Joseph Glidden patented barbed wire. In 1963, Lee Harvey Oswald, accused of the assassination of U.S. President John F. Kennedy, was shot and killed by nightclub owner Jack Ruby while being transferred from Dallas Police Headquarters in Texas. In 2021, on this day, Sweden's first female Prime Minister, Magdalena Andersson, resigned just 12 hours after she took on the job when her coalition government fell apart. In 2022 on this day, British-born Flossie, aged almost 27 years, was crowned the world's oldest cat by the Guinness Book of Records. The personal story of the day, cleaning up. When we read the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet, we may think we understand why he was doing that for them. And there are a number of spiritual insights incorporated within this story. But our focus today will remain on the simple act itself. John, for instance, was a close friend. Then there was Peter and Andrew who had been so faithful in following the Master. Each of the disciples must have had something that endeared him to Jesus. But why did he wash the feet of Judas? Jesus, Jesus knew that he was stooping down to serve the one who would soon stoop to perform history's worst act of treachery. Jesus was performing the most menial of tasks for a person who treated the creator of the universe as being someone worth no more than 30 pieces of silver. Knowingly, the one whose name is associated with giving life got his hands dirty to serve the one whose name would stand for betrayal and death for the rest of time. Doesn't Jesus' example tell us something special about service? Doesn't it remind us that we were not called to serve only those who are like us or even those who care for us? We are called to serve all people, the lovely and the unlovely, the friendly and the not so friendly. When was the last time you washed the feet of someone like Judas? Very significant question there to ask ourselves through this day. The devotional thoughts of the day, we're continuing on with making your free time work. 
today, Matthew 5 and verse 48 provides the scripture with references from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 13 to 16. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Part of loving God is to hate sin. This is as true in leisure as it is in other areas of life, which is why our leisure choices must be holy. Today's verses follow on the heels of what we learned yesterday. We love God, God loves holiness, therefore we should love holiness. Unfortunately, we too often falsely equate the quest for holiness with the absence of pleasure. So to apply this principle to our free time may take some mental readjustments. How can we be holy in all that we do? The series of imperatives in 1 Peter reveals it for us. We need to prepare our minds for action, a phrase that suggests warming up for an athletic contest. We might think holiness is a matter of will first, but God says to prepare our minds for wise decision making. We should also be self-controlled in the face of temptation and set our hope on God's grace, especially his future for us. We are not to fall victim to the worldly desires we used to have. In our leisure choices too, then, we need to check for sin and impurity. See 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1 and 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 16. For example, what about the television programs and movies that we watch? The books and magazines we read? The music we listen to? The computer games we play? The websites we visit? Here's the question. Would God be pleased with our choices? Would Jesus do our free time activities with us? Are we enjoying pleasure, beauty and rest as he intended us to do? After all, it is for our benefit that God directs our path. Those sort of checks are things that we need to do regularly because we can slip away from reminding ourselves about those things. The second thought, the world is not my home. Scripture from 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, that is without a future resurrection, we are of all men most miserable. This is a great world to live in, despite all the bad things going on. And all the hardships it seems that we have to endure, it is still wonderful. After all, this world is only what we make it. Most of us would love to have a carefree world, one in which we could live without terrorism, racism or any of the other isms of life. But Adam and Eve put an end to that glorious kind of world, at least for the time being. We have to often suffer in this world, and most of the time at the hands of others. But thank goodness we aren't of this world, although we are in this world. So we must live day to day trying to make a better place for ourselves and our friends. Our Christian outlook on life, our understanding of God's word and his promises to his people should keep us happy. After all, we are here to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and his redeeming power and saving grace. If each individual on earth could know the joys of the Holy Spirit, we would be living in a much better world. Amen to that. However, at the moment, that's not to be. Not all will listen to the calling of Jesus Christ, nor to his word. But thank the Lord, we Christians are citizens of two worlds, the earthly one and our heavenly home. And one of these days, we will go to be with our Lord and Saviour, and these earthly troubles will only be memories, perhaps memories that will no longer concern us, for we will be too busy 
being in the eternal presence of the Lord. A wonderful promise, but some wise things to think about uh, in the meantime. A couple of laughing moments for the day, I hope. These are just some quips that uh, wise people have put together. Everyone has a photographic memory. Some don't have film. Diplomacy is saying, nice doggy until you find a rock. <laughs> I just got lost in thought. It was unfamiliar territory. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say will be misquoted, then used against you. Nothing is foolproof to a sufficiently talented fool. If you try to fail and succeed, which have you done? Why is there an expiration date on sour cream? Whose cruel idea was it for the word lisp to have S in it? Max of the day. Dolphins have the best sense of hearing among all animals. They are able to hear 14 times better than humans. And children have more sensitive ears than adults. They can hear a larger variety of sounds. The closing thought for the day. Remember, everyone has a story to tell and it is not always a happy one. Look beyond the outward man and find what lies within. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you'll be uplifted and edified by the uh, thoughts and scriptures of today and we hope that you'll join us again for some more tomorrow. In the meantime, may the Lord bless your day. Bye for now.